Hey you guys. Okay, so trellising is on all of our minds because we need some place that we know is going to be able to hold all of the tomatoes, all of the peppers, all of the sweet peas, all of the things that need some support. We are trying to think about how we are going to be supporting these plants. And if it's not on your mind, and you are growing tomatoes indeterminate and you are growing like things that need a trellis, it's time to think about that. Because if you wait until your things start growing and falling over, it's gonna feel overwhelming. So this is the time. I have some string and I have some scissors because I'm going to show you what we've been working on. As you can see behind me, the greenhouse is even more full than it was the last time. Like it is wild in there. I cannot get through the door. I have to be so careful. It's definitely busting at the seams. I mean, on one hand, I'm definitely using the greenhouse, but on another hand, have I gone too far? I don't know. <laughs> With all of the plants that I have planned to put into the garden, I am starting to think about well, not starting to think about, but I am continuing to think about how to trellis all of these different things. So our indeterminate tomatoes, they need trellising. Um, any peas, cucumbers, all of those things, they need trellising. And I do have trellis in place, but there are some things that need trellises that I'm going to have to make. I did a video last year, and I will link that down below of three different trellis methods that I tried out. I definitely learned what was my favorite in those three, which was the grid method. That was hands down my favorite. I love the way it looked. It was just so cute. It was so inexpensive. So that was hands down my favorite of the three. I tried the Florida weave as well as, um, and I don't know the term, but it's like where you take a piece of string and you hook it into the ground and you wrap your tomato around it and then put it around the pole. You'll see it when you watch that video if you haven't seen it yet. All of those methods were really great, but I did feel like they were more hands-on than I really wanted it to be. So I've decided to get back out here and work with some of this bamboo and see what we can come up with that I can use to incorporate the grid method again because I really loved it. Bamboo is actually a natural resource on our property and we have a love-hate relationship with this bamboo. I know it seems like we should have a love-love relationship but it's a love-hate relationship with this bamboo because <laughs> for a couple reasons it's massive and it needs to be tamed. Not only that several of our family members are actually like it's, we're very sensitive to the bamboo like my son and husband came out and they cut some bamboo for me because I decided that I, it was time to put bamboo all around our whole entire garden so this bamboo it serves um, kind of as a trick <laughs> I want to say uh, to make the deer believe that our fencing is higher than it is because we only have four feet four feet of fencing and so they can easily jump over that. So I'm trying to give an illusion that the fence is a lot higher and harder to jump over than it really is. So since we had some extra pieces, I went ahead and started to consider how I could use those pieces to create some trellising for some of our plants that we're going to be trellising that's going to need trellising very very soon I decided to make a sort of TP with the bamboo and then I'm going to apply the grid method onto the TP so let me show you how that went things add up so quickly when it comes to gardening. So the bamboo is a free resource on our property that we have. And so utilizing it is a wise thing to do. 
so I am going to go finish the TP with our grid method but before I do I want to give you a look in the greenhouse because it is exploding in here so when I first walk in you can see that we have some more baby tomato plants we have our um, basil that I up potted and some pepper plants over here and y'all we have these are not even our pepper plants from in the house these were pepper plants that a friend grew and um, were, they were given to us and so we have more pepper plants these are all of the tomatoes that you saw last time and the zinnias our sweet potatoes are growing so well and my heart is so happy about it because I want to grow the most sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes is one of my favorite foods and so I would love to grow such an abundance of these. I can't believe our tomatoes still have three weeks before they go out. Look how they've grown, y'all. That's wild. A jungle of tomatoes. <laughs> Maybe I'm going overboard. I don't know. But look at these beauties. Oh my goodness. My heart is so happy. So very happy. So I just planted these, we planted these um, not too long ago and they're all zinnias and so I'm really excited about that. These are our dahlias, I see a couple sprouts in there. These ones have sprouted already. I wanted to kind of do a pre-sprout since I have no idea how to grow dahlias. I wanted to see which ones were actually going to produce. So there we have it. And back to the tomatoes, y'all. They're all looking good. They could all use some fertilizer. And so I'm going to be fertilizing probably tomorrow. This is another tray of zinnias. And I have some other flowers, too, on this tray. And then these are our florets. Florette zinnias. I'm so excited about those to see those popping up. Oh my goodness. Lots of things up here. More, are more tomatoes looking great. Here's our tray of nasturtiums as well as um, the okra that I planted and the beets, y'all, that have sprouted so quickly. I'm so shocked. They've sprouted and so I'm really excited about that. But all of these right here, those are our okra. You guys gave so many great suggestions on how to actually eat the okra. So I'm really excited about that. Some of my favorite suggestions were trying it raw because I hadn't done that. Someone said they put it in the air fryer. I was thinking that we would just try to like pickle it and see how that went. Oh, they said to try it when it's super young because it doesn't have any slime or any of the tough stringiness. Um, so it just eliminates that woodiness. And I always harvest okra when it's way too big. Okra grows really fast, y'all. Like, And so you have to catch it. And so I'm going to be on my job when it comes to okra this year so that I can at least try it at all the different stages so if i need to try it young i'm going to come out here and i'm going to harvest it young to see if that is the stage that we love okra because i want to try it actually like it <laughs> y'all remember when i said we couldn't grow lavender i couldn't grow lavender <laughs> look at these lavenders in here stop it look at those lavenders y'all oh my goodness Okay, so let's go to this area and go ahead and finish up this trellis. There is a very detailed look at this trellis at the end of this video. 
So if you are trying to follow me up closely and you just don't understand what's going on, I am going to definitely give you a better look as well as link the video for the step-by-step -step tutorial. So we have our first set of twine in place going side to side and now we're going to get that twine going up and down which is going to give us that grid look. So here is the finished look. It's the TP with the grid trellis and I'm so excited about it. I think it's going to be such a fun spot, especially for the kids to go under there and pick whatever's growing and just kind of sit and enjoy being in a TP that is definitely going to be covered with green. The vibe is going to be super cool a vibe these are our twin trellises right here that Thomas and I put together for a dollar it was like less than a dollar I'll link that as well because it's such a great project if you have some tools on hand um, we just use some free wood and Thomas was able to create this and so this will be our second year using it and I am always so excited about something that brings beauty as well as function to the garden. I mean I just think that it's such an incredible thing um, to be able to use something and it's very very useful but it also is just so beautiful. I also started to rake back all of our pine straw from on top of these beds. This is going to be um, a spot that we are going to plant tomatoes. And so I'm really excited about that. Tomatoes are going to go along the back. And I'm also going to interplant onions and marigolds. And then I think we're going to have some indeterminate tomatoes along the front. And so we are about to have so much food growing right here in this space. Still have carrot treasures all around the garden, which is so fun. So picking a ton of sweet peas from our fall. <laughs> planting of these which is just so cool that they are still providing food for our family um, we are always out here snacking such a wonderful garden snack for sure I feel like circle beds are harder for me to plan out I don't really know why but just the shape I it's just typical it's just it's hard for me to imagine how I want it to look when everything is grown in. But right now, what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to plant some tall flowers in the middle. Just allow the middle section to be flowers and then plant bush beans all around the edge. That's what I'm thinking. And then for our birdie beds, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant pepper. So this is a, I believe this is a two by, hmm, I don't remember what size this is, but it's five feet long. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant peppers in this bed. So it'll be peppers right down the middle. I may plant some bush beans on the edges but we'll see about that. This bed, 
really has struggled. And so I want to do something for this bed that is just going to impart nutrients. Two ways I'm going to do that. I'm going to plant sunflowers in this bed right down the middle because sunflowers are so cool. Not only are they beautiful, but they actually detoxify the soil. So all of the toxins and impurities that are in the soil, the sunflower actually draws that up into its roots. And so that's why it's important whenever you are done with your sunflower to pull it from the root out of the ground. At least that's what I've heard and that's what I've come to understand from the research. And I just thought that was such a cool thing to know um, because typically we can leave the roots of the plant in the soil and over time it will break down, right? But the sunflower we want to completely take out. So I'm going to plant sunflowers right in the middle and then I'm going to plant green beans right along all of the edge because green beans and plants nitrogen into the soil and so I'm going to see if we cannot have a beautiful harvest of food from this bed while improving the soil that is really my hope this lettuce is looking beautiful I am going to completely pull this up soon we also have one beautiful head of lettuce over here that decided to sprout up which is so exciting So this is our second birdie bed. I'm going to do the same thing like the first one. I'm going to plant all peppers in this bed. And I'll probably plant our spicy peppers um, in these two birdie beds so I know where they are. But we have so many pepper plants. I'm still trying to figure out where they're all going to go. We do still have some cabbage that I need to harvest. And so I'm going to be harvesting these beauties this upcoming week we do have some brussels sprouts that are trying to grow on here which i'm so excited to see i absolutely love brussels so hopefully this beauty stays intact and we can get some brussels sprouts another really beautiful head of the cabbage Nightfall definitely comes quickly when you are just wanting to be in the garden. I feel like the day like is in a fast forward for sure, but it is coming to the end of the day. So I'm about to call it quits. I'm going to do a few more things. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today in the garden. I hope that you are inspired to look around and see what it is that you have, what resources that you have or you could find that you can use that will help you to create a space that you will absolutely love. I'll see you guys next time. So let me show you exactly what I've done here. So I've made an A-frame They are crisscross right at the top and I was able to put a bamboo connecting the two A-frames. I put one right down the middle, put a piece right in the middle for some support. And then there's a piece at the bottom. I also put a piece right in the middle, but it doesn't quite go to the top. And I did that because that's the two sizes that I had left and so I just went with it. So the pieces I just used zip ties. I did the grid method and I will leave the video down below. I showed it in such great detail and explained it so well so if you're interested in doing this pattern I will leave that down below. This is going to be such a cool place to walk underneath when it is all completely full. Sorry.